Hello everyone, my name is Gretet here from ZeroOneGaming.com and NoobcastGaming.com. It is Wednesday and I've got some gaming news as per usual. The game in the background is Frozen Synapse. If you haven't seen this before, it's kind of an interesting cyberpunk type strategy game. It's a turn by turn and you don't have to play it all at once. I can tell I haven't played it in a year and a half because holy crap do I suck. You watch me fail. Two missions in this, but yeah, it's very interesting and it's worth a gander. When you buy it off Steam, you actually get two <coughs> copies of it for you and a friend, so it's a good way to get a decent game and, you know, split the cost with someone and enjoy it. I mean, it's really worth a look at. As far as the gaming news is concerned, though, let's go back a little bit here and look at one of the more popular games that came out this year, Borderlands 2. It seems that there was a glitch that was resetting badass ranks and just taking away your golden keys. The glitch seems to have appeared right after the release of the Mechromancer DLC that was released earlier this week, but the developer Gearbox is saying that it's a completely unrelated matter. In a statement from the developer, they said the good news is the release of Mechromancer and today's update are not connected to the occurrences of badass rank being reset. While the timing may appear coincidental, it's a separate issue that we are continuing to investigate. Well, yeah, that's a little bit of an oops, and I'm sure there's quite a few people that sank quite a bit of time into their ranking and game and such. So the badass rank is actually given to those that finish in-game achievements and such. The part I'm curious about, and there is no word about it, is whether or not those rankings are gone for good or if people are going to get those ranks back. If they don't, I'm sure we will see quite a few unhappy un individuals. So hopefully Gearbox can get those rankings back for those individuals. And as soon as there's any type of announcement for that, stay tuned on one of our websites, whether it's Zero One Gaming or Noobcast Gaming, for that information. In news I covered a few months ago, it's been announced. The release date for ToeJam & Earl and its sequel, Panic on Funkentron. The two games will be released on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network on November 7th. Each will be available for about $5 each, or about 800 Microsoft points. The games were rumored earlier this year, and I reported on it then because they were talking about adding trophies or slash achievements to the playable co-op game. Uh, the game is also going to be playable online for the original game. What Toe Jam & Earl is, it was released on the Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive back in 1991. It was critically acclaimed for its unusual taste and presentation, which was a dungeon crawler. You took the role of one of two alien rappers that crash-landed on this strange planet called Earth, and you're trying to escape from its weird inhabitants. The sequel, Panic on Funkatron, is when those aliens made it back home but humans snuck aboard their spaceship and now you have to capture them to send them back. The difference being the sequel is a side-scrolling platformer versus the dungeon crawler the original game was. Both games were well received back when they were released and they did see a sequel back in 2002 over on the Dreamcast. <laughs> well, I might have to take a skip on this one mainly because I've actually had this on my Nintendo Wii virtual console for quite some time but it does take me back i do remember toe jam and earl and i do remember panic on funkatron when i was a kid it was a lot of fun it was very enjoyable it was a great introduction to dungeon crawling games for a younger crowd so as we matured a little we got to enjoy some of the other great dungeon crawling games such as well i don't know the original diablo for instance amongst other big names of course to see these games these classics be revived for one last breath of air it's worth a look if you haven't seen it before it's not that expensive to get it on either PSN or Xbox Live Arcade if you have some spare change check one of the games out you might not be too disappointed by them and the last thing that I found is a little bit of Microsoft news once again so it was unveiled that there's a new prototype that's in the works called digits what this is, it's a controller that's strapped to your wrist and uses cameras and lasers to manipulate different things on the screen. Similar to the Kinect technology that Microsoft has been developing, this will track players' movements on screen and have a completely innovative experience in-game. The project leader, David Kim, said in a statement, 
that we had to use new technologies that are small and use less power. It shouldn't interfere with daily activity, and we wanted to enable continuous interaction. He also described the size of the device as two ping pong balls taped together. Well, this seems interesting. It reminds me a lot of the power glove concept, although the fact that you don't have to wear an annoying glove that you had to try to fit to your hand is a great idea. At the same time, I don't know how I feel about it. Some of the pictures that you're seeing, you see this huge device taped to your wrist. And although, yes, it, they describe it as two ping pong balls, I think that might be what they optimize for, but not currently in its prototypes, which is the only thing that's been developed. In any case, it might be interesting to see that. If that's the case, what I really want to see is a game like Dragon Ball Z Comeback, where you actually get the full movements. And in order to fight, you actually have to do the hand movements or what have you to do the attacks you desire. Not only that, but with the microphone technology in the Kinects that I'll be launching with the new gen consoles, you actually have to shout your commands. That could be a little bit fun too. Kami! Ame! Ah! Yeah, I just did that. I want to take that as my cue to wrap it up for this video. I will be around for a stream again in the near future. We had a great simulcast last night over on the Twitch channel. I say we because I was joined by one of my podcast co-hosts over on the Noobcast TV Twitch channel, which we recently created. So any of the four podcast hosts of our itty-bitty little series could stream at any time any of the games that they happen to be playing. While doing that, since I represent two different websites, I was over on my channel, twitch.tv slash grethade, simulcasting where you can watch both streams at once. Took a little bit of work, but it was really cool. Chances are you might count on seeing that again. It. It's a really cool idea, and it could be something that could catch on, maybe even be a little popular. Who knows? We'll see, shall see, and all that good stuff, right? As for this video, you know the drill. Really? If you have any comments about my video, whether it be positive or negative, please leave it in the comment section down below. That is that area where you can type things and tell us what you think, and we can read it so the whole world can know. I'd appreciate it. If you did like my video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. My name's been Grethade, and I'll see you guys next time. I forgot how good the soundtrack was.